And that's it for the first episode. Uh, these are going to be short and snappy. Hello everyone and welcome to the third lesson in the Permanent Way series where I attempt to use city skylines to teach permanent way and railway concepts. This one's going to be a bit meta because I recorded the video before we did a live stream together but I'm recording the audio after everything so it should be fairly smooth and I'm sure no one will really notice. Okay, so before we get into actually designing a bit of railway, I'd like to very briefly talk about, and, and this time I, I promise, I mean briefly, talk about horizontal transitions. In the last episode, we looked at horizontal geometry in the form of straights and curves, which are known as regular elements. But how are these elements actually connected? Because we don't always just stick them together. Engineers use horizontal transitions to connect regular horizontal elements. Uh, these are formed of spirals with changing curvature, which are limited by the rate of change of cant, the rate of change of cant efficiency, and by the cant gradient. Transitions allow a gradual change in lateral acceleration, as well as permitting changes in applied cant or cant deficiency. They're defined by the adjacent regular elements, so uh, can connect a straight to a curve, can connect two curves of different radius, so like a shallower and a tighter curve, or indeed two reverse curves with opposing curvature. So that's all I'm going to say about horizontal transitions. Uh, again, a bit like Kant, it's something that's really important to understand in terms of how we design railways, but it's something that city skylines doesn't model, and just like when you're building a model railway, you don't necessarily need to worry about transitions because no one will really notice. So now it's time to kick off the map. At last, the thing you've all been waiting for. Um, so here we go. Uh, we're now looking at uh, the map. It's just loaded. Uh, I've got all the tiles switched on, as you can see. First things first, oh, there's, a, there's our connection, lovely, nice, maybe that's where we'll start. Uh, first things first, uh, what I always do, or what I'm certainly going to do this time, is get rid of all of the existing railway lines that are within the map, because they've just been drawn, they've just been drawn on arbitrarily with absolutely no real idea of what a railway looks like, so let's just get rid of all those. They're gone, bye-bye. Nice little industrial area, hmm, maybe we'll come back to that. Oh, there's another one, let's get rid of that. Careful to keep that for future. Oop, just double check that I can still place railway there because that would have been a stack, that's fine. You can see while I'm deleting these that there's no earthwork underneath it. They've just been laid flat on the ground. No good at all. Just check that there aren't any uh, anywhere else I've missed. No, lovely. Right, time to start our first town. So. What I normally do, place a roundabout, lovely. So it's our first little town. Nice little bit of coast road there going along the coast. Just place in a few service buildings. Lovely, nice and simple. Nope, just uh, get some power on the go and some water. Oh, you got you all know this, right? Let's try a bit of mixed use. Yeah, just get some streets going on. This is where we're going to put our railway. So that's where I reckon the railway is going to be. First things first, work out where the station is going to be, pick an elevation, and then flatten the ground that the railway station is going to go on. So I'm going to place place my railway station on the flat. There we go, lovely. I'm going to use Metro Line for this. Um, as is often the case for early railways, they didn't really think about the future, so as you can see, I'm placing a road in the way um, at the end of the terminal. There's our main road. Plumb everything in, and there we are. Excellent. There's our first town. So the first railway line we're going to draw on this map is going to be a very simple passenger railway connecting to a new industrial area. The reason I'm doing a passenger, not a freight line, which is a bit ahistorical, is because it's nice and simple. First things first, I'm going to flatten out a nice area for our station at the other end of the line. So place a road, place our station uh, on it, and then we've got the two ends of our railway. Now when I'm drawing a new railway line, what I generally do is use the dirt roads. Um, partly because railways are often built that way anyway to start with, but also because if I'm playing a campaign mode and I'm using money, like a good old-fashioned neoliberal, 
uh, I will uh, use roads because they're nice and cheap so I can draw the route of my railway without uh, then demolishing a load of railway lines that I don't want. As we've discussed in previous videos, when it comes to horizontal geometry, railways are formed of straights and curves. And the best thing to do in city skylines is to start with your straights. So you can see here's me placing straights, uh, you know, choosing what my line is kind of going to look like, where I want it to be, uh, how close to whatever kind of adjacent constraints we've got, cliffs or river or whatever it happens to be, roads. Then I'm going to join those straights up with curves. Now there are two tools for drawing curves in City Skylines. There's a tool that allows you to draw a curve with two fixed legs, so you can draw either a constant curve or an ellipse shape. And then there's the, spot, the kind of weavy, wibbly, wobbly curve tool. Now funnily enough, actually the second one is better for drawing realistic looking railway lines, because by drawing irregular curves, you're gonna start making your railway line look a bit weird and certainly make it look a bit unrealistic if you have someone like me stealing your video and commenting on it for clicks. No, 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 no. So the alignment, we're gonna draw straight past these cliffs to start with. We're gonna draw another straight that comes out from the station. And I'm just gonna extend that first straight just so I can see where those two meet. The next straight is gonna be coming out of the station at the other end. And then now, if we look at the curve tools, so I've just extended that straight. If we look at the curve tools, we're going to look at the first curve tool, and you can see it allows you to draw an irregular curve. So I'm there with it, you, know, you can see it, it's, it's, it's irregular, it's, it's, it's not actually that good. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to draw the next straight in, and you can see now that if I just delete that, you can see using the second tool allows me to draw the curve such that it reaches uh, parallel with the straight adjacent to it. Just do it again, so you can see I'm using the second tool there and I'm making using the guides in City Skylines to make sure that it's tan, it comes off at a tangent to the other straight. So in the world of City Skylines, as you connect your curves and straights, on a railway certainly, you really want to make sure that the curves and the straights come off at a tangent to each other. And that's how you get your nice, smooth looking railway linemen. Now I've done something else here. You can see for those two curves, I've dropped in two bits of dirt road just at the points at which the straights and the curves meet. Now the reason I've done that will become very clear when you see what I do next. I'm going into the earthwork tools. Now I'm going to go into a bit more detail about vertical alignments in the next video. But for now, I'm going to keep this railway fairly flat. So you can see, I'm just going to pick a level underneath the station that I want my railway to be at. And I'm now going to just very carefully, with it on the smallest brush setting and the highest sensitivity, use that tool to draw a line underneath where the railway is. So where I've put that dirt track, you can see now I'm running the tool along. So I'm either creating an embankment or a cutting. So for the straight on the middle of the alignment, you can see here I've picked an elevation kind of halfway along it. And that's what I'm going to use to be the level of the track. And I've done the same again for the other end, pick the station position because I don't want to move that and then make the railway there level. So the last thing I'm going to do is a bit different. Rather than using a flat grade from the other station, I'm actually going to use the slope tool. So by right clicking at one end of the slope and then using the left click to draw the slope along underneath the railway, again using the smallest brush and the high sensitivity from one end to the other, I actually draw a single vertical grade. Again, we're going to talk about this more at the next episode. But suffice to say, it gives me a nice vertical alignment underneath the two flat grades, one under the station and one on the straight at the other end. So now you get to see why I've drawn those pokey little spurs of dirt track. By drawing my straight track elements, connecting between the straight track at each end, it follows the earthworks that I've just drawn very nicely. All I then need to do is connect those straights up using the second curve tool, so the wibbly wobbly one, not the one that looks like a sensible curve. And hey presto, we have a railway alignment. Now, a railway is not a railway without trains running on it, so let's just set up a train service running between the two stations. All that remains is to set up the new town at the other end. And there you have it. So we've got a nice little uh, town area. There we are. Let's just, oh, wait a minute. Let's just uh, draw some electricity cables in and build a couple of things here and there. Maybe start setting up a bit of an industrial area. Yeah, there we go. Put the forest in. That makes sense to be forest, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there we have it. So before we look longingly at our new railway line that we've built, let's just uh, draw in our little towns here as uh, town number two. Name this. Name it. And uh, there we go, let's go to the other end and do the same thing. We're gonna draw this here. And you can see town number two, name it. Yep, spot the deliberate mistake. So whichever one you want, either the foresty town or the town by the river at the other end, uh, by the roundabout, name them in the comments, name them in the comments. And there we go, we can see our nice railway line running back and forth. Uh, also sewage becoming a disaster, let's not worry about that for now. And there we go, we can enjoy a nice bit of cinematic view of our railway station at one end in this town number two that you're going to name. Ah, it looks nice, doesn't it? See the train pulling in? 
Lovely stuff. Nice little quiet town. Now you can see the platform's already filling up. Isn't that nice? This is quite a good map, actually. I think it's one of the, the uh, one of the stock ones that has been provided with one of the DLCs. Uh, it's good. Really like this. Uh, I think we're going to have fun with this one. In fact, as you saw in the live stream, we've already built up quite a lot of extra stuff. Oh, there's a train. Here you can see the train coming around, the nice curve. There you see. Lovely. And there you go, a train pulling at the station at the other end, next to the forestry, and a load of passengers. Uh, theoretically, they'll all be workers, I suppose. Getting out. Oh, their legs aren't moving. Oh, there we go. Uh, on their way off to work in the forestry area. So, that railway seems to be doing its job nicely. Today's lesson covered horizontal alignments and what that looks like in practice. Next lesson, we're going to talk about the vertical alignment. Because a railway is a 3D thing, and it doesn't just have a horizontal, it also has a vertical alignment. And the two are interrelated. So we're going to have a little think about that in the next lesson. I'll see you then. Cheerio!